How do we use Mod Organizer to update our mods? And how do we use it to merge our mods? And I suppose, probably more importantly, what on earth do I mean by merging mods? These are the questions I'll be answering in this video. So far in this series, we've learned what Mod Organizer is, how to install it, and how to use it to install the sort of the basic mods. But before we go on to learn how to install more complicated mods, I want to show you the update process, the process of making sure your mods are the latest version, as well as showing you how to merge mods that come in multiple file parts into one single mod to make it a little neater on your system. So, we now know how to install the basic mods, but how do we update mods? I mean, this is something you're going to have to do occasionally. A new version of a mod is going to come out, or a patch is going to come out, and you're going to have to update the mod. So how do we do that? To show you one of the ways that you update, I'm going to use Pure Waters, which is a mod that overhauls the way the water looks in the game, makes it look a lot better. And I have installed version 4.6. This is a slightly older version. If I double click on this, you can see there is an ESP, an INI file, and a texture folder. And I've decided I'm going to update this mod to version 4.7. And if I was using something like Nexus Mod Manager, what I would probably do is deactivate this mod, perhaps even remove it from my list. I could actually do that, uh, but I'm going to leave it there. I would then activate the new version, perhaps give it a different title so that I can see the difference. Click manual, make sure everything's set up. Now you can see this time I've got a BSA and an ESP. The texture files have been packaged into an archive. Click OK. I now have Pure Waters 4.7 and I activate that. That would be the way you're used to doing it using other mod managers. That is not the way I would recommend doing it. So let me put it back to how it was. So there is for version 4.6. I'm going to double click on version 4.7. I'm going to leave the name of the mod the same because then it will replace this one or it will update this one. I'm going to click manual just to set the data folder. Click OK. This mod seems to be installed already. Do you want to add files from this archive over overwriting existing ones, or do you want to completely replace the existing files? Now, in this case, I want to replace them. I'm replacing all of the files from 4.6 with all of the files from 4.7. So remember, 4.6 has a folder with textures in it. So if I replace, you'll notice the version number has changed to 4.7. It is still selected. And if I Double click on it, the file tree now reflects the fact that 4.7 uses a BSA archive instead of a folder of textures. And that's it, I have updated to version 4.7. Now, the advantage to this, of course, is neatness, and it also means that you've updated the, the textures, the mod, for all of your profiles. I haven't covered profiles yet, but any profile that is using this particular mod, this installation of the mod, has now been updated. That might not be something that you want to do, so it is possible that what you wanted to do was leave 1.6 installed and install 4.7, call this 4.7 as I did before, and then disable and enable for this profile. However, on another profile, it would still have 4.6 selected. If you are running profiles with different versions of the mod, I'm afraid you're going to have to do it this way. You're going to have to have two versions of the mod installed, 4.6 and 4.7, because if you do update the one that was selected, any other profiles that have that selected will get updated as well. So keep that in mind. Now, not all mods get updated with a completely new self-contained version. Uh, very often a mod will get a single file update and that must be added to the main file. 
And one such example is Tropical Skyrim, a climate overhaul. This is a mod that turns Skyrim into a tropical paradise. And it does have version 1.0 main file. That is a large file, as you can see, close to a gig. And it has two updates. One very small update that adds a single texture that was missing, and this needs to be added. And an update version 1.1, which is reasonably small, and this must be added to the main file as well. I believe it replaces some of the textures. So you need all three of these files. Now, for example, if I have Tropical Skyrim installed, version 1.0, how can I update this? Well, of course, one possible way is the the sort of the way you would do it in Nexus Mod Manager. You also install the updates. So I'm going to rename this one Texture Missing from Main Archive and go to Manual, make sure everything's okay, and install that and do the same for the update. This is the update for Tropical Skyrim. As you can see, it's going to replace a few meshes. And once that is done, I can just activate these two. It is pretty important to make sure that these are below Tropical Skyrim so that they get the higher priority, which means they will win when the data is loaded. Um, and this does have the advantage that I could have one profile with version 1.0 and then... Well, actually, 1.0 does require this as well. That is required for 1.0. So I could have a profile with version 1.0 and another profile with 1.1. However, if I want all of my profiles to share the new version, this is a bit messy, as you can see. And you get these warnings telling me I need to update these. So it's a little distracting. So let me show you how I would recommend updating this mod. So... I've gone back to version 1.0 and I'm first of all going to add the missing texture. I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to do manual just to have a quick look. It is a single texture file. Click OK. And I'm going to get asked whether I want to, you know, it says the, the mod has been installed. Do I want to merge, replace, rename and so on? I'm going to merge. What this is going to do is it's going to add all of the files from this into the existing installation, merge. That file has now been added into here. I'm then going to do the same for the update. Make sure the name is the same, again, as the installed mod. Click manual, check everything's okay. Click okay and merge. And again, this is now updated to 1.1. All of those files have been merged into the installation of the mod. It didn't delete the original files as it would have if I had hit replace. It's left all of the old files unless there are new versions in the update and it has sent all the new files in there as well. I have basically merged all three of those downloaded files into one installed mod. It's a lot neater as you can see. And on the subject of updating your mods, I will show you how to get Mod Organizer to check if all of the versions you're using are the most up to date. It doesn't do this automatically. You have to prompt it and you can either right click on this panel and click check all for update and it will run off check for updates and then you will have this filter. It says filter update and everything will disappear. Do not panic. It is just showing you which ones need to be updated. In this case, none. I can click this to open up the filters and then click anywhere in this space to deselect updated. I will cover filters in another, another video. So click there and this comes back. I can then close the filters and it would have shown me any of the mods that required updating. You can also go along to this tool icon and check all for update there and it will have the same effect. And as you can see, all of my mods are currently up to date. To give you an idea of how this might work if one of them wasn't, I'm just going to randomly change this version to 2.2. I'm going to pretend that my Winter is Coming Cloaks mod is out of date. I'm going to click check all for updates 
and as you can see it has detected there is a new version and I have this one listed so all of the mods that need updated will be listed here and of course I could then visit on Nexus get the latest version and so on so that is pretty pretty simple pretty useful now the merge function is actually useful for more than just updating your mods you can actually merge multiple mod files together to make a single mod and that can be very useful for example in the case of the Skyrim HD textures mod it comes as five individual files the first one for dungeons and I could for example install this as SHD full dungeons then install landscapes again selecting the name and so on until I have finished do the miscellaneous textures and just do this for all five files and so you will end up with five separate mods in this window one for dungeons landscape miscellaneous Riften and towns and it works just fine um, however as you can see it takes up a little room and I'm getting these warnings that four of the files are out of date and the reason for that is the latest version of this mod is version 1.6 but most of the files are still version 1.5 the 1.6 only applies to Riften so this works and it might be useful if you have one profile that has dungeons but no landscapes and another profile that has landscapes as well that's probably pretty unlikely so there is an alternative way of doing this so this time when I go to install it I'm going to leave the prompted name as the one I'm going to choose the 2k textures I'm going to leave it as that I'm not going to select dungeons and I'm just go to manual double check everything's okay and click okay and this is going to create the mod and then for the rest of the files I'm going to again click OK leave the name as it was and hit merge which is going to add the textures in this case of the landscape into the mod and I'm going to keep doing that for all the other files and of course when I get to the rift and file once again hit merge this time it will actually update the version of the mod to 1.6 which will get rid of this little warning and then finally the towns and once that is done I will have a single mod with all five of those files merged into one and so as you can see that is a lot neater and a little easier to manage one click all of the textures have now been applied and that is about it for this video in part four I'm going to show you how to install mods that come with scripted installers I'm going to show you how to install SKSE and SkyUI these mods are not that difficult to install but people do tend to ask questions about them before trying mod organizer and I thought I would cover them and set your minds at rest so if that is something of interest to you you are more than welcome to join me there and I look forward to seeing you and uh, of course until then remember as always have fun Holy, Holy.